Health experts say anaphylaxis, the life-threatening reaction to foods such as peanuts, insect stings and a range of other triggers, has increased dramatically in the UK over the last 10 years. The number of deaths from anaphylactic shock also rose from 8 in 1998 to 24 in 2007. And the past 10 years has seen hospital admissions double. When the anaphylaxis campaign first formed about 14, 15 years ago, it was estimated there were about 1 in 200 children allergic to nuts. It's now estimated it's 1 in 50 children are allergic to nuts, which is obviously a huge increase. Scientists aren't sure why the number of allergy cases in the UK is rising. I'm afraid there isn't a definitive reason. Um, it must be something to do with lifestyle to a certain extent because it's changed as our lifestyles have changed and also because we know that the, um, the, the um, areas such as the UK, Australia and, and the United States have far more prevalence of allergy than some of the more developing countries. So it must be something to do with an affluent lifestyle but unfortunately there is nothing actually definitive at the moment. The new guidelines are based on advice from the Resuscitation Council. They say that all healthcare professionals need to be able to quickly spot signs of anaphylaxis to provide early treatment and avoid serious consequences. They also urge the quick use of adrenaline injections into the muscle of those affected. The Royal College of Physicians have put together these guidelines to help clinicians in diagnosing and managing allergic reactions, severe allergic reactions known as anaphylaxis. There have been a number of different ways of dealing with anaphylaxis, but this is a putting together of everything so that we can have clear, concise guidelines in one place so that everyone knows how to manage it, what drugs to give and what aftercare to provide. It's estimated a third of the UK population will develop an allergy to food or their environment at some point in their lives. Charities like the Anaphylaxis Campaign say the new guidelines are welcome, but there is still a shortage of allergy services for patients to be referred to. Also, it highlights the need for better specialist care because at the moment the diagnosis is one thing but the long-term management is something that isn't well looked after within the NHS. And one of the things that the anaphylaxis campaign is involved in is making sure that the specialist service grows at the same rate as those people who are living with allergy because at the moment there is a woeful lack of specialists to deal with this growing problem. As a result, groups like the anaphylaxis campaign have seen their workload rise. The anaphylaxis campaign was set up in 1994 and it was set up as a response to a number of um, unfortunate fatalities amongst young people and a group of dedicated parents got together and decided to start a campaign to try and educate people on the, the seriousness of anaphylaxis, hence the anaphylaxis campaign and we've just grown hugely in the 15 or so years that we've been working and we're now the, the, the leading national charity that deals with severe allergy. The new guidelines also recommend a greater investigation of patients who have suffered anaphylaxis to help learn more about the causes and reasons for the rising number of incidents.